Known as the North-South Rail Link, it is a long-discussed project that would create an unbroken rail route from Maine to Washington, D.C., and would actually connect North and South stations. Now, discussion about the nearly three-mile tunnel goes back decades, and the discussion has usually ended at the time to estimate the actual cost to taxpayers. Now, supporters now claim that advances in construction technology would lower the cost to between $2 billion and $3 billion, where in the past the number has been as high as $8 billion. Now, earlier this month, Ch Governor Charlie Baker and state transportation officials began soliciting bids for a study to help determine the feasibility of the project. Now, our next guest is an ardent supporter of the project. After serving the legislator as state rep from 1971 to 1999, John A. Bussinger has continued to advocate for causes that motivate him to run, and that is one of them. We now welcome former state rep John A. Arnold Bussinger. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks very much. My pleasure to be here. Good, good. So uh, let's begin. Let's get right to it. Why, do you, why have you supported this project for so long? I've supported it for actually about 25 years because it's necessary. It was talked about earlier in the 20th century. The point is, and this is true around the world, stub ends or dead ends at, like at North and South Station don't work. If you look back 20 years, we didn't have many of the lines now that come in. There was no Downeaster from Portland. There was no Newbury Port line. Uh, on the south side, there were the three old county lines were yet to be reunited, uh, to be restarted again. They stopped in the late 50s. There was no Acela. Uh, there was no Fairmont line. So the problem is the pressure of the dead ends put those places up to capacity, and they will break down in the future unless we connect them. Okay, so, so what are some of the direct benefits you see from this? The direct benefits are many. First of all, you get rid of that problem of not being able to deal with the capacity. But second of all, you're, you're uniting many miles of, of rail. The biggest advantage for Massachusetts is actually connecting all the commuter rail lines. So for somebody who lived in Lynn could go to a job in Quincy without going through the big dig. So our biggest advantage isn't that Amtrak line necessarily from Portland to Washington, but the shorter distances, the Lowell's, the Lynn's to the Brockton's to connect the north and the south side so there's not that big division there. All right, so take me kind of through it. Where would these tunnels be built, um, just specifically? That's very important. What the rail link really is is an underground tunnel underneath the big dig, and the beauty of it is that that area was already dug out. A lot of the right-of-way problems and the utility relocations were already done. So basically the route and the engineering was done back in the early 90s, the feasibility needs some more work, but it would go underneath the big dig. Will it... Um would it disrupt life in the way that the Big Dig did? No, because the Big Dig basically was what's called cut and cover. They had to take down the overhead. They had to dig down from the top on what you call deep bore technology, and you can go from the ends. Tunnel workers will tell you who are very much in favor of this project, you're going from the ends. In fact, when DeVal Patrick was over at Harvard uh, in, 19, in the late 70s, they were doing the Porter Square uh, project. Yeah. Almost nobody in Cambridge knew it was there because you're underneath the ground. Right, right, right. Okay, so let's get into the cost, right? Because right. uh, always it's about how much is it going to cost us. Um, how much is it that uh, you think it'll it's cost It's very hard to say, but let me say this, and it's a little difficult to say it publicly, but I'll say it anyway. Good. Uh, back in the late 90s, some, pe some people in the transportation building phoned up the cost. That $8 billion figure was phony. Uh, they added costs that were not even part of the big uh, of the of the uh, of the project because they didn't want to do it. So that, that disregard the figure. It was never eight billion, never seven billion. It's much closer to the three billion figure. But I want to emphasize one thing: people in Massachusetts and around the country misuse the word transit. This is not a transit project. When you mention transit, people think of subways and buses. This is an intercity passenger rail project. That's important because it's a national project. It connects that line from Portland to Washington. Using that logic, the funding source for this is, is, is primarily federal. So it's not like it's, a, it's not, it, you can't rate it against any Massachusetts project because it's a national project. So a lot of it will be borne by the federal government. So everybody in America is pitching in to make a, court, a national quarters project. In fact, I'm a vice president of something called the National Quarters Initiative. We're at nationalquarters.org. Uh, because we believe in strong corridors. In fact, if people want to mo know more about the rail link, we're at northsouthraillink.org. Okay, so um, where are we now? I know I read that Charlie Baker and transportation officials have begun so soliciting bids for a study. How long is that study going to take? How much is it well, going to cost? And, and what's that going to tell you? We have no idea. I credit Senator Eldridge from Acton. He got $2 million a few years ago to actually resume the process that Romney suspended. And I want to emphasize, we don't just have a couple of governors supporting this. Governor Dukakis supports it. Governor Well did. Yeah. The late Paul Salucci, my friend, did. Jane Swift did. It was Governor Romney who suspended it in 2003, relying on some of those phony figures. So we have a lot of support. 
the, the funding can come from a combination of federal, hopefully private, and, and state resources. So it's a, it's, a co it's a coalition effort. But I do want to emphasize to listeners that this project was purposely phoned up in terms of the cost so people could argue uh, that they didn't have to do it. How long would this take? To ta well, it's difficult because we have to, this study now that's going on is I would call a pre-study. Okay. The Baker administration wants to study it whether or not that it should actually resume the real process, the environmental process that a different office would do with them helping out. So the, the question is how long would it take? If we get on the, on the stick and do it and get going on it and resume the real thing, real study, uh, in four or five years. All right. But it's a very important project because if we don't do it, there's consequences that we were legally required to study in the eight years we studied it on, uh, on, uh, on our study in 1995 to 2003, it's a big problem if we don't do it. And as Ted Kennedy agreed with what we always said, this is not a nice project. It's a necessary project. There's consequences if we do not do this project. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna thank you for stopping by. My Bring pleasure. Us up to date. I know it's been much talked about, and uh, as this you know moves along, I'm sure we'll have you back. Uh, I'll be happy to come back. All right, stay right there because when we do come back, the Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology comes in with a, a student body of 70% minority students. All the details right here on Urban Update.